Hello, welcome to section 2, useful techniques for higher order components and render props. In the first video we will talk about higher order components, what they are and how to use them. In general, higher order components are basically functions that take a component as an input and return a new component. The idea behind it is that we can use cross-component functionality. For example, if we have two components doing different things, but we want both of them to have the same functionality for one specific aspect, we can use higher order components for that. The example that we will see is about adding an outline to a component. We can add an outline to a button and we can add an outline to a text input or whatever else. But in both cases, this is a cross component functionality, so we add an outline to both components. Higher order components should in general pass on unneeded props to the wrapped component. So basically, if we have a wrapped component and the higher order component function around it, every prop that we get, we should pass on to the inside component. This is useful because if our higher order component doesn't care for a specific prop, then we should pass it on so the inside component can use it if it needs. Another thing that the higher order component should do it changes the display name. The display name is mostly useful for debugging. We will see an example of that also. The last thing that they should do is hoist static methods. A component in React and React Native can have static methods besides the ones that React provides. For example, if you use the library React Navigation, you can add a static method called Navigation Options. With this one, you can control how the navigation works. If we have a higher order component and we wrap a component that has this static method on it, then we need to make sure that we hoist, so basically copy the static methods over to our outside component. We will also see an example of that. Higher order components can have extra state. In the example of the outline that we will see later, we can add, for example, some state that keeps how thick the border is. Another thing that higher order components can do is manipulate props before passing them on. Like we said before, we should pass on all of the props, but sometimes using a higher order component, we can manipulate one of them and pass it on afterwards. This way we can change the way the inside component is rendered. And of course, a higher order component can be as simple as just a log function that logs the props that the component gets, and it can go as complicated as we want. Let's look at some examples. So here I have an empty file. First of all, a higher order component, as we said, is just a function that gets a component as an input and returns another component as the output. This is the very basic higher order component that we can have. This basically does nothing. It would get an, a component as an input and then return a new component that is basically just rendering the inside component. If we wanted to use this, for example, we would do like this. So from this line on, we could use our new component called input button with our higher order component. In the specific case, it would just give us back the original input button. So now let's see what a higher order component should do. Like we said before, we should pass on unneeded props. As you can see, in this case, we are not using any of the props of the component, so we should pass them on as here. Let's see an example of the usage. Let's say we have a render function here. In theory, these two should give us exactly the same output. If we don't pass the props to the component, then this prop will automatically be lost. Therefore, we need to pass all of the props to our inside component. Next is that we should change the display name so we can debug. Let's see an example. I have imported our own higher order component and created the input button that we had before and added it to our view. As you can see, we have the four button and the five button underneath.
we can demonstrate the first should as we had here when we do not pass the props that are unneeded in our higher order component let's say i delete this and as you can see the five button it doesn't get the props anymore it doesn't get the five value and it doesn't get the inverted as soon as i add them back you can see that they are there now for the display name i can start debugging connect our react tools here we will see that in the next section but for now let's just see what we can see if i enable the toggle inspector and click on the button 4 you can see that we have an input button up here if i click on the 5 button you can see that we have a component here that is called our higher order component and then inside it we have an input button if we just look at the top level for example if i close these ones as you can see here we can have an input button and then a higher order component but we don't know what the higher order component is wrapping so this is why the display name is very useful let's create it and see the difference this is the whole change that we have to do i have a get display name here let's look at this this function is very simple it gets a component and then it returns to us the display name of that component or the name or just a random string that we don't know what the component is when i use it here as you can see i set it set the display name as our higher order component and then inside the parentheses whatever i get back from the get display name after that we just return our component once i save and refresh let's go back to the react tools and see what we have again if i click on the 4 we have input button up here and if i click on the 5 this time we have our higher order component and an input button inside the parentheses this is very easy to see when we are at the higher level that we have an input button and then another input button but this time just wrapped with a higher order component this is very useful for debugging views. Let's go to the next one. We said that we should hoist static methods. There is this package hoist non-react statics that we can npm install or yarn install. Once it is installed, we can go ahead and yarn start again. All we have to do for this one is import the function that it exports. And then come down here. And that is all we have to do. This function will make sure that every static method that the component has will be copied over to our own higher order component. The next thing we can see is what the higher component can be. Like we said before, we can have extra state. We can manipulate some props and we can also have access to the lifecycle events. Let's try to create a new higher order component that will log the props of our component, for example. What we have right now is a basic higher order component as we had before that does nothing more than just render our own component. If we want to log the properties of our component, we need to override some functions. Now every time the inside component will receive new props, we will make sure to console log them out. Let's try it. We have to go to our app, import the new higher order component, and make sure we wrap. Now let's go back to our application. Enable debugging again. Go back to our debugger. As you can see when this renders, we have the current props here and the next props. In this case they are both the same of course. So 
This was an introduction to the higher order components with a few examples.